Welcome to the Craig McAvenny Investment YouTube channel. As part of this series of short videos, this video will explain the difference between passive and active investment. So, we've heard from different wealth management advisors these two terms, passive and active. Can you explain a little bit of what it's all about, what it means and what it is? Sure. Well, a passive investment uh, would be in a fund which uh, aims to track an index. So, for instance, if the FTSE 100 did 20%, then the passive fund would attempt to, to match that. Mm. And how it does that is through very wide diversification, investing in lots of uh, different companies. Generally speaking, the fees are lower when it comes to um, using uh, passive investment funds. With active investment funds, you go for a more targeted approach. So you will have a smaller number of investments. It might be more sector specific. And of course, because of that, and because there's more work going on in the analysts, there's a little bit more when it comes to cost. Right, okay. So on the service fees, everybody's scared. You mentioned fees briefly there, that passive was, was cheaper than, than active. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, in someone's mind, they go, well, I want the che cheapest option with the highest return. Of course. So uh, within the fee structure, what is the fee structure? Because everyone's scared of these hidden fees popping up. Can you explain a little bit how that, all that works. Well, I think the easiest way to do that is to um, look at a couple of examples. So okay. one of the funds which uh, a lot of people may be invested in through their pensions or a well-known uh, passive fund is, uh, is the Vanguard series. Now, if we look at the, the fact sheet here, you can see that the cost of this fund is just 0.48% per annum. Very, very low total expense cost. Whereas when we look at an alternative, and I'll show this example here of uh, Linzel Train, which is one of the funds I'd like to use in my clients' portfolios, you can see that the, uh, the costs are, are more, 1.1% per annum. However, when we actually look at the return, when we go back to Vanguard and we see that the Vanguard return over three years was a 30% return, the Linzel Train returned 45%. And it's worth noting that these fact sheets show the return after fees have been taken. So whilst I appreciate that everybody's keen to make sure they're getting a good deal and the compounding effect of fees over a period of time cannot be ignored, as long as you've got your monies invested in the right places using the right managers, then I think the targeted active managed approach is where you're going to get the most growth. I keep being told that I should uh, diversify you know, when I'm investing, diversify uh, my, my portfolio, uh, which I understand because you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. But can you give a little bit more detail about what is meant by, from the financial side, the diversification? Sure. I mean, holistically, uh, everybody needs to have diversification in their overall wealth. Um, you should own some property. Everybody needs a bit of cash. You may own your own business. But part of that wider diversification, your wider holistic wealth management, is of course stock market exposure. Now when it comes to stock market exposure, my argument would be that over diversification can do more harm than good. There, there's a great saying by the, uh, the greatest investor of all time, Warren Buffett, which says that um, over diversification is only required when you don't know what you're doing. So when it comes to stock market investments, whilst diversification is important, I think looking at areas where growth is more likely and investing in those areas through good managers who buy companies is the way to obtain a steady long-term capital growth. So for example, me personally, um, I like technology as a sector of the market. I like healthcare as a sector of the market. I like consumer staples as a sector of the market. So I would buy fund managers who invest in those areas. If I was to buy a, a passive investment fund, as I mentioned before, something which may try and track the FTSE, by default it has the correlation with the companies in that index, i.e. oil companies, financials, where I don't believe you're going to get the most um, return on, on, on your investment. So I think using good managers who buy good companies in sectors where the growth is and therefore reducing diversification 
in that respect is how you go about getting greater capital growth in the long term. So you say good managers. Yeah. How do you find these good managers? Are they related to the fund? Or are they just uh, people you, you research and find out that they're good and you invest in the funds that they, they manage? Yeah, I mean, certainly seeing um, past performance is important. One of the things that all investment managers and wealth managers will say well, is that past performance is no guarantee mm -hmm. of future performance. And I think everybody understands that. But at the same time, if you're good, you're good. And, and to go back to that example I showed before of the uh, Linzel Train Fund, you look at this as a fund and you can see the setup there. You can see that you've got the, the older guy, uh, Mike Linzel, um, the middle-aged guy, Nick Train, and the younger guy, James Bullock. So you have that sort of setup where you have a mentor, you know, with his protege and with a younger guy as well. They've consistently outperformed the market. And how do they do it? They don't do it by trying to set the world on fire, by trying to find the next new thing. Look at their largest holdings. Unilever. We all washed with Dove shampoo at some point. We've all eaten Magnum ice creams. You know, these companies are not going anywhere. Diageo. Bottle of Johnny Walker Black. There's a guy in India today who's buying a bottle of Johnny Walker Black for the first time. Yesterday he was buying Honey Bee Whiskey. He's buying Johnny Walker Black tomorrow. So this is a, a prime example of what I mean by a good fund manager who returns consistent growth for his investors by buying good companies. So basically what you'd say to anyone watching is that they should do, do their due diligence on the fund and fund managers uh, with your financial advisor who's going to propose for you yeah? uh, and also that they should also be looking at sectors which they've got an interest in so they can follow it whether it's buying a stock or within funds. Sure I mean one of the greatest things for me is 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 understanding what you're investing in. Hmm. Uh, the great Peter Lynch who, who some of you may or may not have heard of who, who managed the Fidelity Magellan Fund in the 1970s and 1980s had a great saying which said, know what you own and know why you own it. So again, coming back to uh, funds like Linz or Train, it's something I understand. I understand that Unilever are likely to sell more bottles of Dove shampoo tomorrow than they did yesterday. When we start looking at other areas of the market, such as oil and commodities, I don't understand how they're valued. Mm -hmm. you know, they're politically exposed. Uh, there's an argument between Russia and Saudi Arabia and suddenly the oil price goes down. Mm -hmm. Something else happens politically, the oil price goes up. Mm -hmm. There's no rationale for why um, that company is going to grow. Whereas when you look at a company which, which sells products which everybody needs and with an ever-increasing world population and people moving up in socioeconomic stages, you can see how, how companies like those that Linz or Train buy are, are where your long-term growth is going to be. We hope that you found this video helpful and please subscribe to the YouTube channel to see more videos. Also click the notification button and get the notification of new releases. If you have any questions, please add them to the comments below uh, and Craig will get back to you. Uh, and don't forget to like and share. See you again. Thank you. Thank you, Angie.